Hello everybody, Torgal here with a special episode that I'm gonna call Transition between the Avant mod pack and this server here where we only a little bit over a handful of episodes in and a new server that we set up over the last two days for the community um, on the Bevo Tech Pack, Tech Pack Reborn mod pack available on the AT launcher I'm going to put the info down in the description there if you guys want to download it and join us. Uh, but I wanted to explain to you guys why don't I go out and fly around a little bit here of what's going on. Um, Minecraft 1.8.9 mod it is not ready for multiplayer gaming. It, it just isn't doable. Um, you guys have to understand that the server we're running this mod pack on it's the most, most powerful server I ever ran a mod pack on. It has 128 gigabytes of RAM. It has two Xeon processors. Um, we have, we have um, Arc, Seven Days to Die, and three Minecraft servers running on this um, box, excluding test worlds. And we never use more than 10% CPU in these kind of things. Um, or never even 50% RAM. So the box that we're running this on is extremely powerful. And all other mod packs that we're playing on it, they, they work flawlessly. So it is not the hardware. I wanted to get that out of the way right away. Um, what it is, is Minecraft 1.8. Uh, we did some talk with mod developers, server administrators, and also other YouTubers that all have tried out 1.8 and 1.9 also. Uh, 1.9, I'm not going to, you know, write off. It's still very new when it comes to the modded. But we know for a fact that 1.8, the base code of Minecraft is very bad. Very, I, I don't even like to say bad because it's just very resource intensive. Um, more than 1.7 or 1.9, 1 1.8 is just really heavy on resources when it comes to multiplayer. So vanilla is no problem to play, right? But modded is just, un it's not doable. And let me show you guys an example here. If I do TPS, you guys, well, right now is a really bad example, but you see right there, 1.55 TPS, 1.6 with four players on. Sometimes we get up to like seven or eight TPS now. It's gonna come up a little bit higher. There we go. That's probably the peak right there. And don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> Anyway, the TPS is really, really bad. And we tried everything on, on, on another server where we had a bunch of the people in the community log over, help us out by disabling certain mods, enabling other ones and everything. And there's just nothing wrong with, with the mods that we can tell. Nothing is eating up too much and so on. It's just not doable. And on top of that, we have a lot of corruption, um, crashes. I've spent last week, that was kind of the last straw for me. An average of three hours a day fixing crashes. Um, like every time the server goes offline or crashes and somebody's in the RF tools dimension, I need to change their NBT data because they can't log in anymore. We get random crashes from everything. There is a portal up here that if I'm out of render distance with this Stargate portal right there and I come in, I usually crash the desktop. So right now I'm in render distance, so I should be fine. But if I leave the area and come back, I will most likely crash. Now, of course, that is probably forge related, those rendering crashes. And it's, you know, there's not one thing to blame or one person, not nothing. It's just that it is not ready. And so we decided, you know, we want to have fun playing. Um, I'm a YouTuber. I'm not a server administrator. That's, that, that's not my job, okay? Um, I want to make YouTube videos, which is suffering because I'm spending so much time administering this server and this mod pack. Um, so let, a couple of days ago, I put the word out there and we decided that we are going to switch to Bevo mod pack, uh, Bevo tech pack, and we're going to start fresh. Because the idea behind this server was for the community to have a place to play together. So viewers can play with their YouTubers or Twitchers and just, you know, Form friendships, have fun, you know, just play the game, not... I didn't want us to turn into beta testers and that kind of amount of crash reports I've posted on mod packs, uh, I should say on mods, uh, githubs and so on is countless. And nothing is happening because, well, 
Um, matter of fact is that a lot of big modders um, actually decided they're going to skip 1.8.9 together. They're going straight for 1.9. So, um, but don't worry. I'm going to keep updating the Avant mod pack. I don't want to quit it. I'm going to keep updating. We're going to keep this server. We're just going to have it offline. And whenever we have a big update for the Avant mod pack, we're going to put it on the server, fire it up, and then ask a bunch of the people in the community to log on, play for an hour or two, and we can... You know, look at the TPS and see if there's any improvements. Because maybe Forge made a huge change, or maybe some of the mods, you know, changed to a point where all of a sudden everything clicks and it works. And we're also going to work on a 1.9 mod pack, of course. And so we're not done with the Avant mod pack. We, we want to make it, we want to continue working on it. So if you have a single player game, it works flawless. Not flawless, but it works good. Um, you don't have the TPS issues and so on. Don't worry, I'm going to keep the mod pack updated, you know, as often as I think that it's needed. Hey, there's lots of new mods, there's maybe, you know, Ender IO coming out, I'm going to add it, those kind of things. But anyways, I don't want to ramble for too long. I wanted to thank you guys all very much for your support on the server. You guys have been really, really amazing. There was very little whining. It was, everybody was very understanding that this is out of our hands. Everybody played with the lag. There's still people playing. Up to the last minute. <laughs> um, and you know, that overall um, feedback is that people really enjoy this mod pack. A lot of people also, you know, voice that, you know, there really isn't much to do. There's some basic tech and that's about it. And a couple magic mods. Well, there simply isn't anything available for us to add. So I just wanted to give you a last look around the area so you can see how much we have accomplished here. Like this area over here, you guys haven't seen Glitch built this. This was going to become our new Botania area, like one for the area for actual Botania. And then the other one where we're going to use for the Gaia uh, rituals and stuff. Um, over here, I started building a Colosseum. Let me show you this real quick. Yep. All right, here's a basement. And I wanted to start intangible down here. And then build a Colosseum on top, which I had all, you know, planned out and everything. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Over here, we're gonna build. We were gonna build the hanging gardens as our tree farm and stuff, like enormous. Uh, but it's okay. We're gonna build some awesome, cool stuff. I wanted to show you guys two little bloopers, or not bloopers, but two little funny things here. Glitch left me this sign here the other day. Holy shnikes. You guys know where that's from? That's Chris Farley. That's from uh, one of my, you know, favorite pastime comedians, and I, I love him. And that's where Holy Shnikes comes from. And of course, I had to, you know, return the favor and i know he's a huge hoff uh fan so you know he's in love with the guy <laughs> so i had to leave him this little screen in here so when you come into his temple you know his shrine of worship i thought i'd give him an appropriate screen right there with david <laughs> anyways guys so i'm gonna get back to spawn now and i am actually yep yeah, let's do that right now I'm going to go to spawn. I am on the ship because, of course, we are taking the airship with us. And I am going to go ahead and head over to the new Vivo Tech Pack server now. And I'll meet you guys over there and we start on a new adventure. I'll see you in a second. And we have arrived. Welcome to the Vivo Tech Pack server. I am super excited, guys. Um, I, I really want to get going here. This mod pack, and we were looking at it for the last couple of days. Looks really cool. There's a lot of mods I'm looking forward to playing to, and one in particular, and that's Magnetic Craft. Um, Magnetic Craft plus Immersive Engineering plus a few other mods. Man, the factory possibilities that we're going to have here are amazing. Anyway, you guys can see I'm very excited about being here. And let me show you right here is Spawn. This is somewhere. Let me see here. Spawn. What? <laughs> Spawn. There we go. You come on right here. And this is where you actually arrive, right? So we get our little uh, uh, fountain here. A lot of these um, buildings probably look familiar from uh, my Underbridge series. I thought, you know, make a steampunk village over here for our airship and so on. It's really cool. Glitch actually came up with the idea of anchoring them. And once you get flight, guys, on the server, make sure you look around. There's a lot of really cool things. to look. I can't fly, so I cannot show you. Um, I just deleted my profile and everything. I'm in, um, you know, regular survival. I even deleted my map and just ran around the exit path here so I can show you on the map 
of how big the spawn area is. I go into that in a second. But there's like an immersive engineering machine up there that this is anchored to, and another one in that tower, you know, that's holding down the airship. Of course, we got the windmills back again. Yay! Um, and back here is a really awesome crane they built. Uh, let me show you. This is supposed to be a logger village, okay? We're in the middle of a big forest, and you can kind of see, you know, how it's a little bit clear cut already, and then maybe some more over there. And, well, it's just handling all the wood in the area but check out this crane here it's it's hard it sucks that i can show you until i can fly but there's like you know rf tools monitors up there and it's really high tech there's like a crane operator and that is the crane all modded we tried to use a lot of modded you know not just vanilla stuff because we are playing modded right and it's picking up the logs from here or bringing them down i don't know exactly but yeah check those little uh hidden gems out make sure to do that uh, and the rest of the buildings, none of them have functionality, okay? They're just here for show. There might be in the future that we put some stuff in there. You know, if there's maybe some interest in certain items that can only be acquired. We, like if there's uncraftable items, okay? Sometimes you get that, that you get recipe conflicts or something. I might just put a trader or something there so you can trade it for something. So you can get the items. You get the idea. You know, we're never going to have any any things on the server like, you know, donations and, and whatever. None of that stuff. This is a community server. Um, everybody should be able to do the same um, as much as possible. There is one exception, actually. Patreons from uh, everybody, they do get one little goodie. Um, everybody has one home on the server um, and they get a few extra. And that is the only difference, guys. Uh, and I hope everybody will understand that. We can disregard that server restart. You guys remember this house right here that was in underbridge also that was where i had the robots and the tree farm and so on anyways um we got a nice little cornfield over here I'm, I'm gonna show you more about this in a few days when we can fly i, I want to give you a nice tour and this is the only real functional building here okay but before i show you this let me show on the map these four x's right here um indicate how big of the admin claim that we took here so there's grief prevention we have a bunch of plugins uh, and this, you can't do anything in this area, guys. But there's also nothing here. I placed magnum torches everywhere. Every one of these buildings has a magnum torch. And every one of these... You see that little pole right there? Uh, right there. This little light right there. There's a magnum torch. So they're all along the path. So you're very safe in this area, okay? When you spawn, it can be night. It doesn't matter. You don't need to run for your life. But if you want to get started playing... I would recommend you following... Oh, I never followed this path right there. Oh, I gotta do that real quick. You can follow either one of these paths out into the wilderness. Um, There. Underneath each one of them is a magnum torch. And you see right here, wilderness 150. And you see all the way back there is a tower. And right there is where the wilderness starts. So that's how far you need to get. And then you can start breaking wood and find a home. Um, We wanted to make sure to have a large area around spawn this time. Because an avant, honestly... It was a giant mess. Some people tried to build some community things, but, you know, it turned out just to be a giant mess. It was quite ugly, honestly. Um, there was only a few gems around the area that were nice. A um, couple of shops and teleport hubs and so on. But the rest was all just, you know, people coming on for a few days, build a giant, ugly cobblestone building and then leave. And wanted to make sure that we don't have that this time. So we claimed a large area. Anyways, follow one of these paths to get out. Um, everybody starts with 16 apples and three books, a quest book, and um, what's this here? Open computers, materials in you, and open world domination. You guys see I did a little bit of farming outside spawn here just to get the basic tools, the stone tools. Because I am going to go into the mining age here first before I look for home. And just look around. You know, I'm, I love my server. Uh, obviously, okay? I shouldn't say mine. Our server, the community server. I always try to keep everything as nice as possible. Um, you know, I always clean up after myself. I don't even like to walk around and destroy things in the old world. <laughs> if they're not on my claim. So, we have a mining world. I'll show you in just a second. That is just like an overworld. So, that's where I'm going to do all my wood chopping, mining, everything. This right here, let's just go through. Is the regular... Oh, let me show you here. The nether, no quarries, okay? Everything is disabled. Um, you cannot put down pumps or quarries or anything. 
if you mine, you know, nether quartz or whatever by hand or glowstone, it's fine. Um, and here's just a little bit. That's uh, the chickens. <laughs> um, that's the building that Glitch built in on the Vant for the nether. And I said, you know what, let's bring that over here because I really like it. it has no purpose. It's just cool looking. And this is a regular nether, okay? But again, we want to keep this pristine. You know what I mean? If people want to set up fast travel, you know, roads or tunnels in here, rail cart systems, it's there. If people want to do it uh, and the nether is not going to be reset, so we're going to be very strict on, you know, quarries and so on. You won't be able to place them because we have world guard. Um, but we want to make sure that if you need a ton of nether quartz and you want to set up a quarry or you want to set up a lava pump or anything, we added two worlds. Right here is a, what we call the nether world. Okay, this is the nether, and this is the nether world. You can go through this portal, or you can go over here into the mining world through this portal. Or you can also use warps. I'm going to go to warp lava. That is that nether world that I just showed you across that red, and this is it right here. This is just, this is this is a nether, okay? This is, this is a normal nether, it's just not the nether on the server, okay? In here, you can go bananas. You can break everything. You can you can use TNT. I don't care. You can use quarries. You can pump your heart out. Because every Monday, we're going to reset this world, most likely. Um, just like the mining world. It's very simple for us. And the other one I wanted to show you is Warp Mine. And that is right here. Now, whoa! <laughs> I walked back through the, uh, through the, through the portal. Um, but that's where I'm going to start right now and get some basic materials. And I wanted to mention one more thing that only we took the default mod pack with all mods. Uh, the only two it's up to you is Morpheus, actually three. If you want to use Morpheus, you don't need it because it's server side. Fast craft it makes you graphics a little faster. It's up to you if you want to use that. And the last one that's optional is journey map. You know, if you want to have a map, you can choose another map if you want. But all other mods you need to enable, otherwise you won't be able to connect to the server of the optional mods. Um, and on the server, we added a terrain generation mod called Real Realistic Terrain Generation. So you guys are going to see some really cool terrain this time. It's not the default Minecraft, it is their Realistic Terrain Generation. Rolling hills, rivers flow normally. You know, like in the real life that you expect a river to flow, not constantly being cut off and stuff like that. But the realistic world generation is only in the overworld. So in the mining world and so on, it's just regular vanilla and it's night. So this is really going to suck. But I am rambling like crazy. I'm super excited, guys. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of mining and, and just material gathering, you know, bunch wood, that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to set out and look for a place. And then I think once I find a place, I want to set up a couple of basic machines with you guys today. And that is all we're going to do in this episode. But anyways, I'm going to get busy here. Oh, one more thing. We also have a quest book. Check this out. That comes with Beaver's Tech Pack. A very, very cool um, mod pack. I'm really looking forward to playing this. It's going to be a lot of fun. And there's a bunch of quests. How many altogether? 62 quests. And, oops, we're up here. Sorry if you guys can hear a train outside. My window's open because it's really, I'm melting in my room right now here. So, like, like the first quest is 64 cobblestone, 64 dirt, and we get a reward back. Pretty sure we're going to get to that today. And I haven't looked through much of the other stuff yet here. Let's see storage, all the different chests and stuff. So, if you're new to modded Minecraft also, I think this is going to help you a lot of kind of, ooh, learning magnetic craft. Sweet. You know, I'm going to do these quests right here. It's because it's going to teach me that quest. So anyways, guys, enough talking. And I'll be back when I find a nice hobbit hole. So we found a nice little valley here. Let me show you guys. It's uh, about a day and a half later now. And I didn't do anything but adventure, explore, and mine. Lots of mining. But let me show you guys the way I took to get here. Um... Uh, spawn is right here. That's where we started over here. I have visited uh, Bamrak is over here. This village is Wild Rascal and that's the only two places because they're close to spawn. So I was able to spawn and just walk there and check them out. But yeah, I came down here and then I actually uh, visited one of these platforms here. Also checked out the ship, but I didn't find anything. 
got a few items from this village actually and then just traveled and then when i was about here um glitch and mike told me about a really cool spot and that's when i then beeline pretty much to come over here the last year last trip my boat broke about here <laughs> um but i also i don't know i think these were already looted so i got tons of loot from thomcraft you know um trees and so on Ooh, i don't even remember seeing this castle here from the ruins mod i must have walked by this and didn't even see it uh anyway so we are whew, right here check this out how cool this is got a magical forest right here extreme hills and then this valley here between the two mountains. Um, I know that Glitch kind of wants to put a base over here. Um, each chance, I don't know if she's going to move in with somebody or build her own little place. And Sparky, or Power, and myself. And I'm going to build right here. A little platform in the water. Let me show you guys this. That's this right here. I had a little idea of something I wanted to use as a starter base. But I changed my mind, so I'm going to um, take that out again, break it here later. I'm lift down here in a little hole right there. I'll show you in a second, but I wanted to fly over this valley real quick just to... Most of the trees uh, we actually planted here. Um, it was quite empty, but check this out. How cool is this? Look at that terrain generation. I love it. Um, like I said, um, let's just gonna build something over here. And uh, let me see if I can land on these trees here, I'm sure. What, 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 land, land, land. Look at this mountain. How cool is that? So my idea here is, and I really hope that I'm going to be able to pull this off because it's quite hard to build. But right along this side of the mountain, stretching into the ocean, I want to build kind of very dark mid, um, steampunk, almost like Warhammer 40k. Um, it's going to be very hard to pull off. But I'm going to give it my best. And then out here, you know, even have an oil platform, almost like, you know, we're sucking the resources out of this land, you know, with oil and all these things. Um, and down here, they built a little castle, just their starter thing here. Um, I got late here to the party, um, but they got smeltery and things like that, a little bit of ore processing. There's Mike running right there. Um, and let me show you guys the hobbit hole. And we got a couple things to do. I made the path easy to walk up here because I was tired of hopping um and right here this is my little hobbit hole which i'm gonna dress up here later probably you <laughs> see it's a <laughs> just a mess and i just want to show you guys real quick the amount of things i think i have three or four division sigils already um and all kinds of stuff growth craft things that i found and now just gonna open each chest real quick just so you guys can look at this bow durability 4000 oh yeah check it out i got depleted uranium boron depleted boats and this sword here is pretty cool. Two shots and mobs are dead. Um, and then we have five more. There's another one up here. I did a lot of mining in the nether also. A lot of smelting thanks to um, glitches or doubling already. And check this out here. The tiny lump of boron. You get in the nether when you mine nether quartz. You get them as a sight drop. It's pretty cool. And then there's more stuff here. From two meteors I got these presses and tons more ore to process in ingots and lots of sand which i got from this desert over here and it's really cool you guys see right there it's my little quarry my hand quarry <laughs> that there's like nine layers of sand so when you do the torch quarrying you get sand super fast so what i want to do real quick here is um before i cut is i want to set up a coke oven and a blast furnace because i need 12 steel um for what i want to do so right here is i don't understand why this connects to something diagonally it kind of bothers me but whatever um so this is the recipe for the coke oven bricks we need 27 but you can only make them in with oh apparently i had two extra they are where did i stick this where did i stick the bricks right there good so we got them and i'm gonna put the Coke oven, let's just put it right here. And uh, the immersive engineering one is not hollow like the Railcraft one. Um, so you just fill it completely. And this hammer, by the way, that I have here, I found in a village, but in case you need to make it, it takes a little bit of treated wood, I think. 
That can't be because you need that to make a cook oven. Let's see here a quick recipe. No, it's just sticks, iron, and string. All right, okay, it does not. It doesn't make any sense. Just right-click in another middle block, and now we got a coke oven. And now let's go ahead and... Ooh, I wonder if I can hit it on the top. Hey, by the way, I'm going to show you guys something. Hopefully I get it. If you don't use a shovel and break dirt, you have a chance of getting this weird mob that spawns. Let me try it one more time. With an empty hand, maybe I get lucky. It, I had no idea what was going on the first time I saw it. And it only happens if you don't use a shovel. You gotta be kidding me. Usually it's like on command you can spawn these guys. Come on, don't let me down. Oh, maybe it's uh, dirt blocks that you haven't placed before. I don't know, but they're little. it looks like the dirt is jumping and they hurt you. They only have four hearts, so you can just kill them real easy, even with a shovel. Um... But the reason I need the steel is for the RF2 storage that I want to make. So let me see if I can hit this with the hammer from the top. No. Okay. So I'm going to need to come from the front. So let's take this guy out. Go down one. There we go. Now it formed. And I can pull this back up. And make it. So now we got this. And now what I'm going to do, of course, is stick 64 coal in here and have this make me uh some cold coke i'm gonna see let's see here is there probably a drum right easiest to make for us yeah i'm gonna make a drum let's make that real quick so i can actually take out for <laughs> guys i have such a mess it's driving me bananas come on there we go let's make some of this here real quick so I'm going to need two pressure plates and one cauldron. It's just because I'm going to make so much cold coke here with the amount of steel that I need. That I want to be able to bucket this out. And we're going to put that right here in the corner for now. So I'm just going to use a bucket um, out of my backpack um, and put that in there when it's needed. And then in here, of course, as soon as I have the cold coke... Oh, uh, where's the rest of my iron? <laughs> here we go. Let's get a whole stack. I'm gonna start putting the cold coke in here, so it's gonna make me steal. You cannot automate the crude blast furnace anymore, by the way. You cannot pipe in or pipe out anything anymore. You can still automate the coke oven, by the way. And I'm waiting. There is a new byproduct here, but um, as far as I know. Um, so the... Actually, there's... Is that for the buckets? I thought that we're getting some kind of a slag. Or maybe it comes out of the blast furnace down here that we get slag now. We'll see when it's ready. But anyway. There we go. That's the first one. Put that in here and we start making steel. And yeah, once I got the 12 steel, I come back and we go ahead and craft our storage. Our beginner storage. I have a pretty cool idea of what to do. And I'll, well, I'll be our bees. I thought I'll take you guys into the nether with me real quick. Let's give me coordinates of this. Fortress, and I'm looking right there. Blaze spawner is somewhere this away because I need four blaze rods. Oh, there's another player here. Hey, say hi to YouTube. He's having the same idea. <laughs> That's cool. I need four blaze rods to make um, the lava crystal to put on a lumber axe. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Ow, ow, ow. Got two of them. Nice. So, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Um, well, we probably didn't... Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> All right, a couple more. I gotta eat or I might die, so that's okay. Anyways, guys, um, sorry for being totally sidetracked, but I'll bring you back as soon as that steel is done. I just wanted to use the time and get these blaze rods so I can make a lava crystal. All right, I actually made more steel than I really needed so far, but I was busy actually doing some admin stuff. 
Um, and I had to take out all the creosite out of this one. It was already full with 12 buckets. And put it over here with a bucket. And keep making steel. I got a few extra in here already. Nine more. But let's go ahead and make our storage that I want to make. And like I said, it's uh, the RF2 modular storage with... I'm going to make three of these storage modules, tier three. So we need three of these um, machine frames. Put that in here to get our three modular storages. And then we need to make the actual modules. So I'm going to need three of these. They do not stack. And it's always the same pattern. It just costs a little more every time. Gee, really inexpensive. I think that if you go like with all iron chests and stuff, you end up spending more. And the cool thing is that I can move these without losing the inventory very easily. And that is what I was about, mostly. So what I'm going to do here now is actually going to just break this here for a minute. And I'm going to put these over here so I can start putting all my stuff away. Um, you just put these in here. I always set them to just the icon shown. I don't really care about any of the other gobbledygook. I don't know. I don't need the, the names and so on. And uh, of course, you know, things like cobble, dirt, sand, and these kind of things. Here, by the way, you see I have a lot of wood and charcoal now. Because Mike was super awesome and he made me two lumber axes. A, a lumite. This is a regular one. I just put Moth 3 on it. And this one is what I needed the blaze rods for. That is where I made this lava crystal. So this one has two moss and this lava crystal here. So when you uh, fell trees, they get automatically smelted into charcoal. Which is going to come in very handy for next episode. Because we're going to start some early game steam. Um, not exactly sure what uh, is all going to be included in the video. But I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to play with a new mod that I haven't... No, Noob to me mod um, that I haven't played with before. So look forward to that. But right now, what I'm going to do is, for example, to give you an idea, I'm going to have one. Um, let's take this one right here. That's going to hold all ore, gems, um, and probably also like crafting materials, like, you know, like iron bars and pistons and that kind of stuff. The other one here, I'm going to mostly use for gobbledygook armor and all you know all this crap here that i don't know what we're gonna use it for but i gotta keep it i can't give it away oh not you stay here um let me put these things away so they're not in my way anymore put this on the bar and split this up so i know not to put anything from my bar but in here and the last one i'm probably don't know yet i'm probably gonna use for like certain woods and blocks and so on Okay, so that's going to be my my setup here that I think should work really nicely. And all nicely cleaned up. I cleaned up this hobbit hole. Um, that is why I wanted these three little storages over there. I think, look at this. I mean, makes it so easy. This was five double chests, two crates, all kinds of gobbledygook. And that is it. I really just want the steel production near me so I can keep my eye on it. Um, been emptying this out. We're up to 24 buckets now. So check it out. This is all the blocks. Look at this. 41 of 300. So I have tons of stuff I can put still in here. Actually, this doesn't go in here. That goes in the random gobbledygook chest over here. Um, which is fine. Having all these things. And right here is all the ore crafting, jemmy, you know, even chanting tables. I thought I had three of those. Let's see. Yep, there's another one. That doesn't go in here. That's more of a crafting thing for me. And the nice thing is also the search, you know. And again, don't forget, if I want to move somewhere, like we go a different building and we're playing around there with some mod or whatever, I can just take all this with me and not worry about it. So I love it. Um, and the last thing I want to do today is turn in a bunch of quests. Oh, I lost my quest book. How do I make a quest book? string in a book please tell me i got i got a string i gave my books all to mike to build us an enchanting area i don't think i have any no nope. all right no problem let's get a leather leather and some papel and let's make a book 
There we go. Enter string in a book and we get another quest book. Good. So we have a couple of quests that I can turn in under starting out. First one, of course, is with 64 cobble and dirt. Get a reward bag. Next one is the more materials where I needed to cook up some stone. And I actually got the sandstone by combining and you see how much sand I have. So that was no problem. Pick one, wool, fish or spruce wood. I'm going to take the wool. I think that is the most. I got spruce a lot, so it doesn't matter. All right. And then here now I'm going to have to farm up 32 obsidian. Okay. But the cool thing is if you check, I checked earlier, I already have the ore stuff done here. And almost everything here, I need 10 emeralds. We have four, I think. What? I have 12 emeralds? Wow. Okay, so this one completed also. Ooh, man, that gives us a basic energy cube, the reward bags, and the obsidian. I am totally gonna get this obsidian real quick, guys. I It's 32 obsidian, that's gonna be easy to get. And I'm gonna keep the bags until the end. Oh, I actually got back up to 30 levels. Uh, enchanted two items today. I just enchanted this one because the, the obsidian took forever. And I got efficiency four, but I also got auto smelt one, which kind of sucks. So I'm going to need to make another pick. Auto smelt isn't bad because I'm getting a lot of smooth stone from my build. So if you, for example, you know, if I break this right here, I'm going to get the smooth stone because it smelts it. But the problem is that it does not ore double, so I definitely don't want to mine ores with it, which is kind of sad. The other thing I enchanted was a bow, but this one is actually the one glitch enchanted. I enchanted one and all I got was soulbound one. That was it. And he enchanted this one and he traded me. He's like, I don't use bows anyway and I'd rather have the soulbound later on to strip it down and reuse it. So I got a nice bow going on here too. Ooh, reminds me. I should probably take the few arrows I have with me in case I ever need them. So, we got the obsidian. Let's put that away. And turn off, uh, turn in, off. <laughs> it completed three quests because of this. So, we got that one. Um, Oil, water, or lava. I don't know. Oil is not hard. None of these are hard to get. I'm just going to take the lava for right now. That's most more crafting recipes. Can I use that? And the diamond pick I'm going to put away right away because there's going to be some crafting recipes um, probably that I'll need that. And turn in this one here. We get 15 banana nut bread and we'll take a reward bag. And this one here, I'm really... The, the, the ruins mod adds emeralds all over the place. Um, not all over the place, but you find these little rock formations that have ores in them and some of them have emeralds so that's where i got most of them from and also if you are in a village the village just does drop uh, random emeralds so that's pretty cool and i get more now so that's nice and a basic energy cube and what do we need for this i need 16 diamonds I only have eight so that's gonna be a little while until we get that well, maybe next episode. Who knows? So let me put this. What happened? I cannot open this. There we go. So we get a basic energy cube. Let's put this banana nut bread away. And this bucket. And. Hmm. Must have ran a backup or something. Let me put this away. And I think this guy, I'm just going to put. What are we going to put this for now? Let's put it right here. So I know I have it. And in case I make any power or something, I know where to put it. And we got a good one, two good ones, and two basic ones. Let's see. I'm totally expecting troll rewards, but cross your fingers. Uh-huh. Like I said, that's how we come on. <laughs> this one, bacon, lettuce, tomato, and bread. Great. More food. And one of every ingot in the world. Steel, silver, lit. All right. So I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm okay with um. You know, the rewards not being all that. But it would have been nice. Like I think Glitch got some generators out of one reward bag, and also like stacks of stacks of stained clay, um, which would have been nice. And I'll just dump this in here. Actually, I'm gonna dump the steak, and I'm gonna take. 
some of these foods with me, um, like this stuff here. And just eat this first. Anyways, guys, that is it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and you are looking forward... Some block overlay, whatever. Um, and you are as excited as I am about Beavis Tech Pack. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And like I said, next time we're going to get started with some steam um, power and also pro or processing. A different way I've never done before. So I'm looking forward to it. I never played with that mod. Um, and I'm going to prepare a little building for it or whatever. And anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care. Stay safe. And bye-bye.